Hello, book builders. In this short tutorial, we are going to take a look at font options, the M dash, white space, and talk a little bit about consistencies as you build your book in Word. I have a little helper document right here. So this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to typography, and it is a beautiful art, and I hope that you will take some time to explore it as you're considering the fonts for your book, um, and also as you work through different classes and learn more about the bookmaking process. There are two main types of font. One is a serif font, and serif refers to these little extras as the kids say these days if you notice here in the f and down here at the foot we have these little extra bits that make it feel a little bit more curvy sans serif or without serif does not have those it's a little bit cleaner um, a little bit more a modern feeling sometimes people feel. Um, there are people who spend a lot of time researching, for example, easy fonts to read on devices, on phones, um, on digital devices. So I will include a link on some advice if you're feeling a little bit lost and you don't have any strong preferences. There are also people who do research on types of fonts that work better for people with learning disabilities like dyslexia. So um, a lot of thought goes into the fonts that you read every day, not just in books, but also on text messages. It's a beautiful science. So. I hope you take a little time to think about the font you want to use for your book. For the purpose of this demonstration, I want to show you how you're able to manipulate the fonts um, and suggest that you might want to choose two fonts for uh, the, the poems that you're going to be having. One you know, school of thought is to present a title and a serif font. and the poem text in a sans serif font. So that's often something that is shared with writers. Um, if you choose just to use one, that's up to you. If you want to use a variety of fonts, that's up to you. But it is important to realize that the font you select is connected with the voice. So if you're selecting, say, a different font or font combination for every single poem in your book, it may send the message to the reader that every single poem in the book is coming from a different voice or different perspective or essentially like a different person has created those. Um, and it can be a little jarring. So don't go crazy. A few tips, right? I'm going to change things around. Um, here's another one that's pretty popular to Georgia, right? So as you're looking at these different fonts, um, Book Antiqua, right? You can see that there's subtle differences and, and changes to them. Um, so a lot of times, it again, it goes back to people's aesthetic preferences. You're not going to be looking at it at size 72. Chances are you'll probably be setting your titles at maybe 14 to 16. Um, some people might choose to draw a lot of attention to it, right? And go with 24 point font. It's up to you, you'll have to play around with what's most important. If the title is super huge, right? People won't be able to miss it, but then people will be thinking this title is really, really important. And I'll show you what that looks like in my own uh, book manuscript under progress in just a moment. The other thing you want to think about with your sans serif is that for this project, it'll be 12 point, right? We're working on an eight and a half by 11 page, and we're working with poems that are 12 point. Uh, text is, is the standard. So again, you're going to have to have a pretty, pretty um, strong thematic reason for throwing people nine point font, right? Or 16 point font in the poem. Um, 
and really put a lot of thought into that, a peer reviewer might say, why? Why is that so big or why is that so small? Because we are so used to having 12 point font for, for text. Here are a couple of different sans serif fonts. So you can, oh, that didn't change. So you can um, see how that changes or not changes. Um, let's try Baghdad instead. Well, goodness, that's not very helpful for this video. Apparently, there we go, there's Calibri. <laughs> I, th I think the universe is telling me maybe I should use Arial. Maybe I should listen. Here's another one, Kandra, right? So think about different combinations. Think about how they look in conversation with each other as well. So I can play around a little bit. Don't spend a million years worrying over this. Find something that looks good to you, feels good to you, is easy on the eyes. I don't want to have to work really, really hard to read the poem. So something like Apple Chancery would be hard, very hard, especially on a digital screen for your readers. So keep those types of things in mind. Let's take a look at the first poem in my collection. Right. What do I want to go with? Hmm. Maybe. Let's try Garmin today. See how I'm feeling that. Notice that that shrunk up a little bit from Times New Roman, right? If I compare these two, it looks a little bit paler because it's not as thick, right? So that's something to think about. I'm going to choose to make my titles 16 point font. Let's see how that looks. And then let's check out maybe something sans serif for the text. Something pretty simple. Let's try Corbel. Mm, so my first response is uh uh. And I think that's because. This is spread out a little bit more and this is a little bit tighter. And so they feel a little bit at odds to me. So maybe I'll try changing from Garamond to All right, that feels a little bit better to me. We still have some fancy going on there, but the ends are a little bit more lined up. The E's are a little bit more standard. So those two are, are talking to me. I'm feeling those two. Once I've gone through and I've decided, all right, this is something I want to try. It's important that I'm really consistent. So I don't move from here to here to something else. So you can use Command A or Control A to highlight the entire document. Right, and so I'm going to come in and choose my core bell 12. The reason why I'm starting with my text font first is because that's the most of everything, right? And then, sad but true, I will just need to go through and put back in my book Antiqua. 16 for the tops of my pages. Before I go through and do that, something I want to think about is the space in between my title and my poem. Being consistent with that is very calming for readers. And if we think about our you know, pages being side by side, having that consistent space going across the top of the page um, can, you know, be very balanced and calming. So I might want to do two. I might want to do three. I guess I might want to have them touch or do one. Um, so think about what you want to do and commit to it. It can be really helpful to have a little notepad next to your table where you've written down, okay, book antique was 16, right? For all the titles, Corbell 12 and two spaces and make yourself a bit of a style sheet. That way you're able to 
kind of go through and say, oh yeah, that's what I wanted to do. Um, so that you're not constantly having to go back to what you've just done and check what that is again. Something else to think about once you've made a change is your page numbers, right? Do you want to follow the text font? You might even want to make it a little bit smaller or a little bit larger, right? Oops. I can see how that looks right there, right? Or is this something where I would prefer to follow the scriptier font, right? And, and have that there. So that's something you play around with. Again, just make sure whatever you do to the first page that you also come down and do on the second page because all of the even pages are going to be uh, taken care of at the same time and all of the odd pages are gonna be taken care of at the same time. And then that way we'll have consistency as we go. The other thing to think about is um, consistency with your page numbers when you put those in. You can do a lot of different things with table of contents. Um, right. And again, do this last thing. This should be the last thing that you do. You can put page numbers on the left. You can enter your table of contents, right? And you can put them. Um, this would be, I don't know this for sure. Definitely no. <laughs> um, if that falls on page 10 or not, you definitely want to check it out. But you can go through and, and do something like that. Take a look at the books that you have in your possession and see what looks good to you, what, it, what is stunning to you. You can put them on the right. Um, sometimes people like to uh, put them on the left and they like to have uh, lines that go through. If you wanna do something like this, I am just holding it down to move it across. You might get it worked out, whoops, a bit for the first line and then pro tip, uh, copy, that line and then use it as the basis so you don't have to do it for for each one all the time right you can you can kind of take what you've got going and, and and put it in lots of different things that you can do you're welcome to be creative um, if you remember looking at, at Tina that was something where it was a little left a little right up and down so you can think about your table of contents as being an experience for the reader that's going to set a tone for the rest of the manuscript as well and then I don't want to forget that I'm using book Antiqua 16 right I can be uh, consistent with that in my front matter and my back matter as well right so if you have questions about the font, consistency, white space, let me know. The last thing I wanted to share before we leave is the M dash. To put in an M dash, go to insert, advanced symbol, and see, I, I use it so much, it's usually sitting on there. It's this one right here, right? That's the one we're looking for. It's the longest dash on the, the page. Click insert, close. That's what we want to use. The hyphen is just for breaking up words, right? Or you're at the end of a line and a word is continuing on the next. And it's also used for turning things into compound nouns and adjectives. So when you're intending to have the break, the dash as a punctuation to create an aside or suggest suspense, you want the M dash. And that's how you can put that in. Once you have put it in, I would copy it and then you can paste it throughout your manuscript. Um, I'll often do kind of an M dash uh, hunt as I get towards the end of my manuscript before I share it with the reader and just go through and get them all at once. You can even do Command F and put in a hyphen 
and that'll show you all of the hyphens on the page and you can double check whether or not it should be a hyphen or an em dash and if it should be an em dash you can take it and correct it so that's a great way to find that error so i hope that this has been helpful for you the next set of tutorials show you how you can develop your first page of the document in order to create a cover i can't wait to talk to you about that I hope that you enjoy building your book in Word, and I look forward to talking to you soon. Take care.